I want to explain to you sprocket ratios. A lot of bikes come from manufacturers and they're geared down. And so the horsepower that you have at the wheel isn't totally all utilized. And that's what this sprocket ratio video is all about. Here's a couple of examples with bikes that have sprockets optimized. You know, here's a pair of CRF 100s. Same bike, both stock, but one has the sprockets optimized, the 581 bike. Note, each time he pulls ahead of the other bike. Here's a 360 Honda. Note how he pulls ahead with his sprockets optimized. Now I have a 47 tooth rear sprocket and a 13 tooth front sprocket. To find the ratio for these two sprockets you would take 13 teeth and divide it into 47 and you'd get about 3.6. So that means for every revolution of the rear wheel the front sprocket will go around 3.6 times. Now I put a white mark on these sprockets so you can see them and I'm going to rotate them for you. It's about 0.6 times revolution. If you look in the chart you'll find out that you can uh, do different ratios but the real cost effective way is to put a one tooth bigger sprocket in the front and the reason being is all I have to do is loosen up the chain a little bit. I don't have to change the length of it. I can just slide the sprocket on, readjust the chain for the proper slack, and now I have a new ratio. So say I went to a 14-2 sprocket. Look what the new ratio is. This is a, a real cost-effective way to get more top speed. You know, you can put all kinds of performance stuff in your engine, but if you're not getting it to where the wheel touches the ground, it's wasted. This is my uh, sprocket selection uh, spreadsheet and all you have to have is the top speed of your bike and you can estimate that and we're gonna put in say 55 miles an hour a 13 tooth front a 47 tooth rear that gives you a 3.62 ratio if you uh, look at the numbers it'll, it'll show you a whole combination of of what every combination you could probably buy and the percentage change in torque and speed you'll get but the graph is nice the sprocket selection chart helps you a whole bunch and this part right here shows you the current set of sprockets you have and the top speed you'll get this represents a 13 tooth front and it will show you if you change it to a 14 tooth front what you would get in top speed or if you changed it down to a 12 depending on which way you want to go but then there's another chart below it and again what it shows you is here's your current ratio and if you jump up it'll show you your percentage change in torque and in speed and it'll be an increase in percentage and it'll help you select the sprockets that you need for your application. Now you can download this chart free on my website at motorcyclenut.com. You can find a link in the description or you can find a link in the iCards. Also on my website I have a, uh, a JT sprockets catalog and what's nice about this is it, it will show you the stock front and rear sprockets and also show you the other available sprockets that you can buy made by this company. It also shows you this chain and this chain length. Now, since we we're doing an XR200R from 86 to 2000, says 1347, and the available sprockets are a 12 and a 14 in front, and here are the rear available sprockets, which is really nice information to have if you're playing with the other graph. It also covers lots of street bikes. Here's a bunch of Hondas. This is nice information to have if you're playing with sprockets so you can figure stuff out before you go buy a bunch of stuff. This uh, PDF catalog for JT Sprockets is available on my website so that you can uh, figure out what your bike's supposed to have and figure out also what you need and come up with a part number. There's also an Amazon search bar. You can stick the JT number in there and the sprocket size and find out 
what these sprockets cost before you do anything, which is really handy. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.